Hello guys, Termex here, and welcome back to another New World video. Now if you've seen it, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, I made a bows tips and tricks for PvP players, and I basically gave a rundown of some important tips that you should definitely know if you play the bow. If you want to check out part one, you can click in the top right right about now, or just check it out on my channel. But today is part two, where I'm going to talk about more general tips for PvP players, because PvE, it's really just the same thing as every other weapon, but when it comes to PvP, the first thing I do want to go over is your gems. Now this is important for a bow player because if you are gem slotting wrong, you're going to have your whole build be affected by this. By that, I mean when it comes down to your gems, know the purpose of them and why you're running them. If you're running 30% slash resistance on a bow build, if you're going to be playing at range the whole time, why do you want to resist 30% slash damage, for example? That just really doesn't make any sense. Trust me, it may sound like something very, very simple, but so many bow players do this where I'll see they have strike and slash resistance up the ass but they have zero thrust zero fire no elemental resist even though when it comes to ranged engagements like most bow players are going to be a part of that's going to be your main source of damage back towards you honestly in my humbled opinion i think having thrust resistance is the only physical resistance you should have on a bow build slash and strike damage you're not going to take that as a bow player and if you do it's either one or two hits and you're rolling out of there or you're gonna die anyway because you got cc lost but now weapon gems are a different story because there's a lots of different ones i'll put it on screen right now what all the gems do if you truly do not know the most popular for bow is going to be opal it is also going to be your conversion gems to another element because a lot of people this season are running a crap ton of thrust resistance so if you could do some bonus damage in the elemental department it's going to make you do more damage overall against those people that are resisting your thrust damage i honestly think if you are running the elemental setup make sure you dedicate to it don't run nothing to benefit your elements and then just pop on a conversion gem you're better off using elemental conversion but then running something that complements it like fire damage with a fire conversion make sure it's on your ring i should say is where the fire damage roll is and then maybe some fire harnessing or some rune glass that give you plus fire damage because it's actually going to dedicate more damage into it if you're running something like opal you're not going to do any elemental damage so then your rune glasses, on the other hand, should be plus range damage, maybe even do some leeching for some lifesteal if you want to be a little bit more tanky. But usually, don't mix and match things. If you're running an elemental build, don't put on range damage heart runes when you could put on elemental damage heart runes and get a lot more benefit out of it. And especially if you're going to be running intelligence on the elemental bow, you cannot miss out on these amazing attributes at 100 intelligence for the light and heavy elemental attack damage and the raw 15% elemental damage that comes from 150 int it's very hard to beat when you're running an elemental bow build now the second thing let's go into weapon perks because these are very controversial in terms of bow players i see some people run them some people religiously will not touch any bow perk but let's talk about that now when it comes down to the bow perks let me tell you one that i think is the most essential regardless of what bow build you're doing if you're using it of course and that's going to be empowering explosive arrow i would only recommend running this on your armor because i don't believe in putting a weapon perk on the weapon itself when it comes to the bow but that allows you to get a 21 percent in power for 10 seconds until your next attack which is really good you could lead that into a poison shot and then a pen shot a rapid shot or even a rain of arrows another one if you're into running rapid shot i cannot deny that the penetrating rapid shot perk is also really damn good as it does ignore a large portion of armor on those light attacks which is 21 percent on the armor and i'm pretty sure it is 31 percent on the bow 35 percent on the bow they did give it a little buff that is really cool one that i've been trying to get on a piece of armor but it's honestly pissing me off because i cannot find see you see there's two good perks and then it's kind of shit it's the enfeebling poison shot that allows you to when you hit someone with a poison shot obviously for six seconds they have a 16 percent damage reduction with everything that they do and it's really really powerful and it's honestly best in slot if you're going to be running poison arrow energizing evade shot is also a good one it gives you 13 stamina when you hit a target and it reduces the cooldown of the ability by 13 percent this isn't a bad perk i don't mind it i just think it's more of a utility thing it doesn't really benefit your build in terms of damage in any way shape or form evade shot is shit for damage and i would almost argue if you're running hardy nimble you really don't need the energizing evade shot because hardy nimble on top of evade shot is just enough in my opinion 
opinion, especially with shirking energy on your pants. It's really overkill at that point. If you're playing the light armor correctly, I think it's just a wasted weapon perk slot, but that's just my personal opinion. And the final one I'm going to talk about because I know everyone likes to run it is the lasting rain of arrows. Now, people need to realize if you're running bloodletting on your jewelry, which increases your bleed duration, lasting rain of arrows is not going to stack like you think it will. But with bleed cap on rain of arrows, it is 24 seconds. Now, if you are running something like the bloodletting perk and you go with rain of arrows, you're not going to see the actual mathematical increases because mathematically, bloodletting on top of lasting rain of arrows should theoretically give you a 28 second bleed, but it only gives you a 24 second bleed because you're hitting bleed cap. Does that make it a bad perk? Absolutely not, but be wary that if you are running bloodletting, you're going to get less value out of the perk when you put it on your bow. You're probably better off putting it on a armor piece if you really want that bleed build. But my argument right now is Reign of Arrows is absolutely insane. The problem with it being, it is a single bleed stack that could be cleansed with a regenerating health pot, a healer, shirking dot cleanse. Dots right now are very powerful, but people are slowly learning how to get rid of them, and that is going to make perks like this a whole lot weaker, as if they just resist the bleed, it's kind of a wasted slot that could be benefited towards something else that is guaranteed to proc. For the next tip, we're talking about non-dodge movements. I like to call it NDM. NDM. Remember NDM. Non-dodge movement is movement in this game that has nothing to do with dodging. Things like that, you see bow players do this, a little bunny skip. It used to be a lot more powerful, but it's just moving in a way that makes you a little bit more unpredictable. This may go without saying, but so many bow players do this where they're shooting me. They do the cool little dodge thing. They evade with rapier. And look, you're stam drained. What are you going to do? You're doing nothing. And then they wonder why they die then they go on reddit and cry about light armor being bad but a few little things i could teach you guys here is just dodging to another direction if you're going to be running towards somebody just you know do little jukes do little dodges out of the way little jumps little dancey dance lets people know where you're going you could do little wraparounds you could obviously use your rapier to do other random things your evade shot you could spin in circles and that'll make your hitbox a little bit different and you could also do different movement while running so if you're running like this you could actually crouch and slide a little bit I actually learned this last week. It gives you a little bit of distance without using any stamina, and it's something that people don't expect because it lowers your hitbox and you're still moving forward as you do it. If you don't know how to do this, I will show you right now. What you're going to do is hold down W, hold down A or D, and then hit your crouch. It is very, very easy. Or if you want to, you could actually time your A and D with your crouch. It does not matter. But if you're running in a straight line, A crouch, running in a straight line, D crouch, running in a straight line, A crouch. And sometimes it depends on your momentum because momentum is a thing in this game if you're going to get more distance. So if I got more momentum from dodging, that's going to make me get a little bit more distance on the A and D. Another cool movement tech that I learned from my homie Loverick in the company. Shout out to Loverick, even though he uses rapid shot he taught me that if you dodge you can actually do some funky stuff so what we're going to do is dodge in a straight line hit your prone button right after a dodge in a opposite direction and i will show you guys right now we're going to run this way dodge prone and as you can see it is a little bit of a movement it's a little weird you guys may be wondering why are you doing that it's lowering your hitbox basically to the floor and you could also skate with it sometimes depending on the angles you hit Oh, shoot. <laughs> As you saw right there, you slide a little bit too much sometimes. But yeah, it's really, really fun to do. I guess one way to teach you guys how to do it is when you're dodging, look at your quiver on your back. Since a lot of you are bow players, obviously, look at where the arrows are pointing. At the end of the dodge animation, when those arrows start aiming towards the sky again, activate the prone. It will teach you very quickly the timing of it. So when you do it, just like that and you automatically stand back up if you don't hold down prone so make sure you actually hold it down so it allows you to do more things but it's really cool because you could be in a 1v1 you dodge like this you're like oh god this dude's gonna attack me you do one of these do one of those all the movement tech right here it's just little things really add up when it comes to your movement but moving on to the last thing in this video, I don't want to drag this on too long, is going to be your secondary weapon. Too many people I see are using perks on their bow that are not synergizing with their second weapon. Just because Arrow plays Void Gauntlet and uses Evade Shot doesn't mean you should use Evade Shot with Spear, for example. It doesn't mean if you see me run Rapier Boom Arrow doesn't mean you should run Boom Arrow on Void Gauntlet. Little things like that. I know it doesn't make sense, but let me explain. Something like Void Gauntlet can benefit greatly from Evade 
Void Shot because it allows you to gain distance when traditionally Void Gauntlet doesn't help you do that unless you're hitting slowing targets with your Orb of Decay or slowing Tether, which is a perk. So you would get more benefit running Evade Shot with a Void Gauntlet because you're going to need that mobility. Alternatively, when you're using the Rapier with all the haste the Rapier has, all the movement, the Evade, the Repost, you may not want to opt for Evade Shot, you may want another damage dealing ability since the Rapier already offers that utility, you probably don't need it. Another great example is people that are running, let's say on my ring, I have bloodletting, right? But I'm not using Reign of Arrows, so why am I using bloodletting? There has to be a purpose for it, right? That is simply for my rapier. I see so many people run bloodletting, and this this applies to everything, like bloodletting, burning, uh, nature damage, or poison damage, the extended poison duration, and then they don't run poison shot. Or they run bonus bleed, but they're using a bow in a void gauntlet and they're not bleeding with anything other than keenly jagged so your perk combinations and your weapon combinations don't have to be the same as all these youtubers i know i make bow builds and i make all these cool setups but my gear for a specific setup does not apply to everyone's build don't run this gear that you've seen on youtube just because you think it's good know how it mechanically works know how it functions and ask yourself when you're running your bow do i need this perk because of my other weapon and that's really the end game with new world all your gear should have a purpose and if it doesn't have a purpose get a new piece of gear it's really that simple but that's it guys that is part two for my pvp bow tips and tricks when it comes to new world i'm not the greatest player in the world but i've been playing this game for almost 2200 hours so i know a little bit about the bow i've been playing bow the whole time with different wacky combinations and if you want to see more combinations with the bow check out my channel i do a bunch of bow content with a bunch of different weapons and mainly my content in new world is dexterity and bow because it's what i like to do and it's what I'm going to keep doing. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you hit the like on it down below as it does spread out my new world content to more people in the new world community. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss out on another video from me, guys. Stay safe and I'll see you all later.